Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about disability, mobility aids and fashion. Now sometimes it's hard to see how they can like fit together but I think it's actually really fun and I also think once you've worked on the fear of disability and mobility aids and the shame of using aids you really deserve to have the personality expression of both the aids but also how you present yourself. I myself use a wheelchair and a walking stick for different days for different events, for different amounts of walking. I really choose the aid based on the situation, which is super helpful for me. But it does mean that your outfit is affected in different ways, depending on the situation, because of the aid you're using. Now, over the last couple of years, we've seen a massive explosion in the online community and the prevalence of younger women using mobility aids. And you can get so much great inspiration of style and fashion and using aids and incorporating them into your outfits from so many of these people. I'm gonna pot some of them here. There's even more than this, but they're all amazing. And I think the first thing that you need is that inspiration, not only from fashion and style itself, but also from seeing fashion and style be expressed by people who use mobility aids, by people who use wheelchairs and walking sticks, people who identify as disabled. And I think that that's really gonna help you if you struggle to express your fashion sense, especially because of your disabled identity and they all like combine together and make you feel maybe more insecure or maybe less confident in the kind of attention grabbing kind of look that I go for maybe. Obviously this isn't everyone's style and maybe your style is more minimalist or gothic or retro or whatever else but whatever it is, you can do it with disability and mobility aids. You can make it work. You can find those aids that work with your aesthetic, that add to your look. And you definitely don't need to think that because you're disabled or because you use mobility aids, you're not involved in fashion. Fashion is and should be for everyone. And sometimes the like major fashion industry tries to sideline us, but we are not having that anymore. We are drawing a line in the sand. We are involved in this. We are interested in fashion, aesthetics, everything that other people are interested we are interested in too and we will not be removed from the fashion conversation and I think that getting that into my head was really important. You go back and look at all the pictures of me and all the videos, you can see me like developing my style and I think that that's so tied with the shame and anxiety around disability. I was anxious about being ill, I didn't identify with being disabled, I wasn't proud of myself was really struggling with my identity, who I was, and fashion and style are so intertwined with identity. And when you're struggling with your identity, it can be really hard to really express your identity through fashion. And so I think these topics are inexplicably linked. They certainly have been for me. You can see that the more comfortable I am with my disability, with my chronic illness, with my use of mobility aids, as you can see that comfort, increasing you can also see the outfit is getting weirder everything is getting more colorful i'm getting more creative you know there's more layering all of these things you can really see the move from nervous and unsure of myself to confident and proud in my kind of fashion evolution as well as my mobility aid use and you know my perspective on disability so let's start off with practical considerations you need to make when you're using a mobility aid like a wheelchair or a walking stick when styling yourself, choosing your outfits, shopping, etc. These things are more practical things. So for example, when you use a wheelchair, you're obviously sat down, which means that your mini skirt gets shorter. I personally don't have a problem with wearing a very short skirt, but sometimes the way they ride up when you're sat down is really annoying. But on the flip side, if you wear a really long skirt in your wheelchair, sometimes it can get caught up and you have to do all the fabric management. So I think that's a significant consideration for your outfit styling. The way clothes look different on the body when stood and sat is very important for what you wear when you are using your wheelchair. Another thing in the kind of vein of the mini skirt is a longer jumper or cardigan when stood might drape and hang, but when sat is touching your legs and being kind of crumpled up, that might not be your preferred look. 
So this consideration of how things look different when stood or sat is crucial, I think, for fashion in a wheelchair. Samantha, a disabled icon on Instagram, does these videos where she styles outfits and then shows them both sat in the wheelchair and stood. I think this is something that's so useful and I don't know why companies aren't doing more things like this. Ideally, obviously, they'd hire a model in a wheelchair to show the clothing off sat down, but they don't actually even have to do that. They could just give the model a chair and, you know, take some photos sat down. That must be so easy just to give us that idea of how things look sat down. For example, the skirt that I'm wearing is a mini skirt, but it's pleated, which means it doesn't have that short riding up constricting thing that's that tighter mini skirts have it's much more comfortable to sit in this is just to show how different pieces of clothing work differently for sitting and standing some people have standing up jeans and i think i almost have the opposite i have clothes that are perfect for the wheelchair they are skirts with stretch or slightly longer skirts that aren't quite mini enough when stood but are perfect when you sat down and they've crumpled a bit again long drapey things long dresses big oversized cardigans long sleeves all of these things have potential to get caught and obviously it's not that you can't wear them it's just that you have to be aware that there is some treacherousness when you're going to wear oversized clothes there is some treacherous there when you're going to wear oversized or flowy fabrics because you need to do a certain amount of fabric management to keep them contained to stop them getting like in the wheels or anything so it's just something to be aware of when you pick your outfit also big flow things you imagine well maybe you don't but i generally when i think oh i'm gonna put on this flowy thing i imagine it in movement i imagine it in a walking it's a flowing i'm twirling but that's not really my reality if I'm in, especially if I'm in the wheelchair, I'm sat down, the flow doesn't have the same effect. You know, it can still have a beautiful fabric, it can still be long, but it doesn't have the, the flow. And I think it changes the identity of the piece of clothing just a little bit. And I think it means it can be styled in a different way, but also thought of in a different way. And if you're really hoping for that flow, you may have to rethink the way you're gonna style something if you're in the wheelchair. And maybe you need a flowy sleeve instead of a flowy skirt, because obviously you're sat on the skirt and the skirt is being weighed down by your body. Whereas a flowy sleeve, as long as you're sure you're not gonna get it stuck in the wheels, could really show that flow. I quite often wear a high heel when I'm in the wheelchair because I don't need to walk so it doesn't matter if my shoes are impractical, they're not going to cause me any pain or difficulty. But they do sometimes cause an issue. My wheelchair has a foot platform and a little strap around the back to hold the foot in place. But the heel can sometimes slip between the platform and the strap and get lodged there. That's something I need to be aware of when I wear heels to not get my foot stuck by getting the heel trapped in that bit. It's not a big deal, it's just a consideration that when I'm gonna wear heels in the wheelchair, I quite often tighten the straps so that there's not that gap at the back so that the heel can't slip down. And another key part of your outfit is handbags. Handbags for wheelchairs versus walking sticks I find have very different needs though I actually do use the same handbag almost always and use it for both if I was specifically buying a handbag for a wheelchair versus for myself when I'm walking I would choose different things when you use a wheelchair and you've got your little cute little fashion handbag it usually sits on your lap right it's kind of the perfect place to put it so a structured bag a top handle I've got a cute little structured crossbody. They're perfect for sitting on your lap. A structured bag that will stand up on its own and be cute is perfect for having on your lap in the wheelchair. I quite often have it around my body anyway, but it's not hanging, it's sat on my lap. Some people might prefer bigger bags because they can fit more in, but for a handbag that's gonna sit on my lap, I don't want something too big that's gonna be, you know, take up all the room and I don't want to have to be like holding on to a bag like this. Of course you can hang a backpack or something on the back which is more of a practical bag but I'm thinking outfit wise a small structured bag is perfect for sitting on your lap in a wheelchair. 
but when you're walking with a walking stick one of your hands is busy or maybe even two if you use two walking sticks or if you use crutches or something you don't want to be holding a little top handle bag again i'm a small bag person so i would always recommend a small bag but for a walking stick i find the best bag is a crossbody is a small crossbody i also have a backpack which works but it hurts my body a bit more because i can fit more in so there's more weight a tiny little crossbody bag that fits my phone and my wallet and my inhaler is the perfect perfect bag it frees up my hands because one hand's busy, which means anything else in the world my other hand has to do. If my hand is holding a little top handle bag or a little hand carry bag, no. Especially at events, a lot of people take clutches. If you've got a walking stick in one hand and a clutch in the other, how are you ever going to get anything out of the clutch? The clutch isn't useful. You need to be able to get in and out of your crossbody bag with one hand it needs to be a one-handable opening and then I get things in and out with one hand so that you don't have to give up the stability of the walking stick sometimes I do hook my walking stick on my arm and then rifle through but phone in and out is a one-handed thing and I think that that is key for choosing a bag you should be able to do it one-handed so that you can continue to lean your weight or get stability from the walking stick if you need it in terms of a walking stick, I also think pockets are ideal if you don't have a bag. Sometimes even a bag you can do with one hand is too much faff. A pocket you can slip your phone in and out of or whatever it is that you reach for the most, which for me is my phone, is perfect. It makes it even easier, an even smoother process to get your phone out with your one hand and then if you pay with your phone, if you have your bus ticket on your phone, whatever else, if your phone is your camera, all these things are just a one pocket away and that's for me the best thing is to have my essentials in a little bag but they aren't used as much and then my most used thing, my phone, in an easy pocket. That's my ideal setup. So in terms of shoes, obviously you can pick any shoes you want and you can go anywhere on the scale of fashion to comfort, somewhere in the middle at either extremes, totally fine. But if you are the type of person like me, do you want to wear heels? You need to make sure that your walking stick assuming you're going to be walking and not using a wheelchair your walking stick crutches rollator whatever can accommodate you however much taller you're going to be there is no point putting heels on then you're going to walk and your walking stick is four inches too small it's not really an effective aid anymore it's not helpful it's not doing what it needs to do that's something that's really key i think you've got to make sure that either you have an adjustable walking stick or you have a secondary walking stick that's the right height to give you that flexibility of being able to wear whatever shoes you want if you try and use your regular height walking stick with heels i think you can probably get away with an inch heel but anything more you've got a four inch heel there is no way you can use your regular height walking stick because it is just too low you have to bend over to use it it doesn't give you the support that you need and it's just going to end in disaster so i recommend investing in a higher stick especially if you like to wear heels for events get an event stick or get a adjustable height stick so that you can go with whatever shoes you decide to wear there's nothing worse than putting a pair of shoes on being like oh i'm so beautiful and standing up and being like oh god i have no support here my body can't do the shoes on their own and the stick is not helping okay so we've done all the practical stuff of the things to remember but what about the aesthetics how do you make wheelchairs walking sticks crutches how do we get them to be our aesthetic to match us to be an extension of the showing of our personality so there's obviously two options here you buy something that's pretty or you buy something plain and you make it pretty. Now, I've done both of these. My walking sticks are from Neo Walks and they are beautiful. They are spectacular. They deserve everything and I'm just obsessed with them. And my wheelchair, which is practical, which is like okay looking. It's not super ugly, but it's not like a good looking wheelchair. It's fine. It's grey. Meh. So I embellished it. I have a whole video on decorating my wheelchair. I decorated my wheelchair myself and I've been thinking 
it's been over a year since I did it and I'm thinking I might switch it up and do another video at some point about redecorating it and doing it in a different way. But you can buy cheaper versions of mobility aids and then decorate them to suit you. Colourful tape, paint, stickers, all of this kind of stuff can be added to create your aesthetic. Or you can spend more money and buy something like intrinsically beautiful, which is obviously a bit more of an investment, but also in some ways just so worth it. If you want to see me decorate my wheelchair, click on this video and I will see you next week. Bye!